Hello everyone. So in this video, I thought I'll probably share uh, my experience of uh, upgrading my site ravisaga.in from Drupal 8.8.2 to the latest Drupal 9.3.0. So for the past couple of days, I was actually working on um, this upgrade and uh, I thought I'll probably share uh, how I did this upgrade and also at the same time I do have some plans uh, for this uh, website and my company website sparksys.com. So first of all, uh, I will share a few things about uh, the upgrade process. Now let me show you the uh, configuration of, uh, of, I mean not really configuration but uh, the status report of uh, this site. and. Uh, this site is right now, I mean, I, I just upgraded it uh, today in the morning. So this is running on 9.3.0, which is uh, great because this is the latest version of uh, Drupal. And uh, the way I work on this particular site or a uh, couple of other, uh, other sites in Drupal is basically using a development workflow. So I do have my local development environment on this uh, machine, on this Arch Linux uh, uh, that I have. and on my server, I do have a staging environment and uh, the production environment. I mean, the environment is same, but I do have staging and uh, production. So whenever I have to do an upgrade, I do it on my local. Then I push the changes to the staging and then uh, I test it. And then, of course, I do the same thing on production. So while I was doing this upgrade, I was also documenting and creating a run book. So I basically prepared this page. I mean, I'll share the link in this particular uh, video so you can also see how it works so the main thing here is that uh, i was basically using i mean I i'll jump to the upgrade part directly so my setup is basically this i have a local site then i have a staging site and of course uh, i have a live site and uh, these sites are already configured and what i normally do whenever i have to whenever i have to do an upgrade i first refresh my local I mean, my local instance of Drupal with the latest production data because, you know, I, I think it is good to have latest, uh, you know, data from production. But the code is same. I mean, the code is the same at this stage. So I basically take a MySQL term from production. Then uh, I also make sure that uh, if I have done any changes, and sometimes I do changes directly on production, like, you know, I hardly install a new module on production, but uh, uh, rarely I do have some uh, changes in the theme, which is my uh, custom theme. I, I'm using a sub theme of Bootstrap. So if there are, there are any changes to, to, to that, I also make sure that I bring those changes from uh, the production to local instance. Because if you're using Drupal Composer, but by the way, I use a Drupal Composer for uh, uh, managing this. So I'll, I'll probably open this uh, page for all of you. So this is uh, something that I feel is quite good for managing uh, Drupal based sites uh, using Composer. It will take care of a lot of things for you. So this is something that, that I have been using for a few years now. Now, if you're using a uh, Drupal uh, Composer, it will uh, make sure that not everything is, uh, uh, I mean, not all the directories are part of the part of uh, the uh, I mean they're they're basically ignored from get get ignore and if I probably show you very quickly I will basically open my um, my my site and uh, I will show you my get ign get ignore so if get no not this one get is it here I guess so uh, dot get ignore come on i think i'm in the wrong directory or what i need to also do cd yes so let us take a look at uh, the get ignore file and if you look here in this particular file i basically have this uh, i mean drush vendor web core module, contrib, theme contrib, and I mean, most of the directories are actually ignored because the uh, composer will make sure that uh, 
these directories are brought back when you run composer install later on which which i will show you in a while so uh talking about how to how i refresh the data i basically take a mysql dump and then i refresh it with uh, i basically um restore it on my local and then at the same time i also make sure i are sync my files from production to my local database uh, not database sorry local file system so i do r sync of that and uh, i also sometimes take a look at the settings.php which is of course no it is usually different but it might be sometimes i need, I need to take a look at the production settings.php which you don't have to do but uh, um uh but sometimes if you want to maybe make sure that uh, your settings.php is also you know same except of course the database configurations then uh, do copy it if you have to uh, but the main thing that i do on local is i do a git pull because uh, you know i want to make sure that i have everything latest from the production along with the you know changes to the theme and then i basically do a comp uh, composer uh, install which uh, which is needed because uh, sometimes if you have installed maybe a new module on on production which of course you i don't think you should do but uh, uh, you can run it just in case and it will basically make sure that you have all the right modules that are probably missing but again if you are not really installing any module on production then you don't need to do it and then uh, uh, clear the cache and uh, now you have a local site with same data configurations as production now talking about how i did the upgrade from uh, drupal 8.8.2 to 930 so on local i had to basically downgrade my composer from version 2 to version 1 which you can do using this command on server i do on production i do have a uh, uh, composer 1 but for this upgrade to work i had to use uh, you know because when you install composer right now in december 2021 i think you will get version 2. Point something so I, I had to do this then you can uh, put your site in the maintenance board and then uh, you can uh, rebuild your site just in case and uh, first thing that you need to do is you need to check for uh, all the modules and everything that is possibly uh, due for upgrade i mean it will tell you whether this particular module uh, is using an old version or not so you can run this command and based on this based on the output of this command you can actually install if I mean you will get a list of five or six or maybe more i mean definitely more uh modules that are probably not that, that needs to be upgraded so you will get a list and based on the list you can actually do an upgrade of those modules using this command now this command will only work when you uh when there is a minor version change if let us say you're upgrading address from let us say 1.6 to 1.8 you can run this command but if there is a major version upgrade like if you're using version one of that particular module and uh, the suggested version is version 2. Point something then you need to use this composer require and then once you do these things these commands will probably work for most of the modules but if not then don't worry we will probably try to fix it later on uh, because I, I, for me it didn't really work for each and every module then of course you can do rush update db and then it, you know it will probably f fix few things in the, in the database if if there are uh, you know pending updates then uh, the actual upgrade will uh, be done using this command composer update uh, drupal core drupal core uh, hyphen star and then uh, make sure uh, you update your db and for drupal 9 i believe you have to remove uh, drupal core uh, after you have done this upgrade uh, you will need to remove it from your uh, composer.json uh, file which i did because without that i was not able to really able to upgrade other modules and uh, then uh, uh, what you can also do if something is not working let us say you're trying to upgrade to 930 you can check actually using this command composer prohibits uh, drupal slash core 930 it will tell you what all modules or whatever is blocking you and by the way if you're using composer and if you encounter any memory issues which i I'm, I'm sure you will you can actually prefix your composer with this particular uh, variable composer memory limit is equal to minus one and then uh, uh, what i did i reverted my composer back to version two and then i installed those uh, missing uh, uh, and by the way yeah so this command uh, is probably um, 
going to upgrade it to 8.9 or what what you can also do is you can also look at this particular command so there are so I, I tried it a couple of times it didn't work uh because you know no, no, nothing really works uh, in in one go uh, and of course we have to learn so i also tried running this command which is basically specifying the exact version of of drupal and this command actually worked for me and while i was running this command i also um installed because it, if if you are trying to install this particular uh, if you're trying to upgrade using this command and if you modules are complaining that then you can actually mention those modules here along with the uh, the exact version so for example if i'm doing if if there if there was an error about uh, symphony yaml version 4434 you can actually specify this in the command and try again so i i had to basically do this for a couple of uh, those uh, modules and then uh, don't do an actual up up update yet you can specify it uh, using this uh, hyphen f and no update because if you do if you don't do this if you try to up update it in the one update it in one go then uh, i think there is like a chicken and egg problem where uh, it, it might complain about the uh, dependencies but those dependencies are based on another dependencies that are not installed yet so if you do hyphen f and no update then uh, you can then this command will work and then you can actually perform the upgrade using update using composer update and then uh, run drush update db and uh, make sure and what i did i basically removed the drupal core all the lines in my composer.json where i had drupal slash core i think there were there were only a couple of lines i removed them and uh, what i did i also installed a couple of other additional modules like h5 h5p which i use for quiz i also installed uh, this uh, gashi filter and a few other modules like uh, geocoder and uh, first i had to remove the geocoder the previous version and i installed it again then uh, it will install the new version because there was a major upgrade and I also had to install the library for GeoCoder, which is this one. And then uh, I had to also install Google Analytics. Uh, apologies for this uh, messed up formatting, but uh, I didn't include these lines in the you know code block. But and by the way, I sh I tried uh, upgrading these modules earlier, but it didn't it didn't work. So you can only do this uh, after the upgrade. And then that is it. Uh, and once you do this, uh, then of course your local will be, I mean, of course, you know, try to run Drush update DB if you can. And uh, once it, once this is done, then what you can do is, uh, uh, and by the way, about the configurations, you can also use uh, this uh, config, config export feature from your local to production, but in, not in my case, because I just refreshed my local from production. So I didn't do it. But uh, what I did then, I basically committed my changes, which is nothing but, you know, composer.json, I believe. And uh, then you can go back to your staging. Now this time, you know, we'll test how this will work on staging. So go, go to the staging instance of, uh, uh, I mean, on, on your server. And then uh, you can uh, make sure, I mean, in my case, I pulled the latest uh, database from production to your, uh, to my staging. And then I also copied the files using rsync. But you don't, you might not need to do it if your uh, staging instance is close to your uh, production data. But I restored it anyways. And then uh, uh, I just ran uh, this. Uh, and by the way, in Drupal 9, you have to basically make sure that in your settings.php, you can, uh, you have to basically modify this line, this variable, uh, config sync directory. I, I think, I think till Drupal 8, it was. Uh, this array but you, you know, it won't work anymore so you have to specify this in this particular you know ma using this variable and then uh, make sure your settings.php is, is uh, back to the restricted uh, mode uh, change the permissions and then uh, do a composer install drush update db and uh, clear the cache and that is it uh, and then your uh, staging will be on 930 and of course, you know, once everything is for working fine on staging, then do the same thing on just uh, just go back to your uh, pr production, do a git pull, composer install. And by the way, when you're doing it on comp like usually uh, when you're doing composer install on production, you have to specify hyphen f and node dev because you don't really want to install development modules on production. But I don't really worry too much about it. I mean, uh, I, I think as a good practice, you should not. But uh, I'm anyways running my 
production side from dev branch so i don't really massively worry about it and uh, that is it that is all i all i had to do i mean of course it took me a while to figure out everything now the, now the plan is that because i do have this site ravisaga.in which is of course you now a site where i have all my videos and there, there is a lot of content but i'm also in a process of uh, revamping my company website sparkses.com now what i was thinking is initially i was thinking of keeping it separate but then i thought uh, maybe uh, i can use the drupal multi site feature where uh, i can run two drupal sites from the same code base but different databases which is of course you know uh which makes sense because uh, my most of my sites have the same usually same modules and uh, they are not really different from each other for example if you look at my spark my company website the layout and everything in fact the theme as well is all same as my personal i mean it, it is not really a personal website it is more about you know the, the my my blog it is also very tightly i, I mean it, it is in a way ravisaga.in is in a way not too different from my company website uh, in 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 lot of aspects uh, because i share everything on my on my site here ravisaga.in so what i was thinking instead of using a multi site feature i will use a domain access so this particular module domain access module i have used it used it in the past it is wonderful what this can do you will have one code base one database but two domains can point to the same uh site and based on uh, the domain for example if i have a sparkses.com uh i mean of course you have to make sure that you know in your uh, apache v host file you have to point both the domains to the right to the same uh, directory root and uh, this module will take care of uh, what to show to the user so based on uh, what uh, domain user is coming from uh the site can be slightly different and also because my site ravisaga.in i have a lot of videos related, related to you know things that i share jira linux drupal for example uh i want to basically make sure that uh, content is easily shared between uh, ravisaga.in and sparkses.com and that is why i i have decided to uh let go of this site i mean quick because this site is also very old uh i mean the content and everything but the content is not really a lot i will probably migrate those blogs manually or 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 old post and also it is a good opportunity for me to rebuild the site but what i will do is i will use this domain access module to uh basically have the same site same database but slightly different things on the on the ui for example for sparkses.com i will of course have a separate theme uh with with a with a slight change in the color maybe or and of course you no know, different logo but uh, everything else will be same and of course you know using this particular module you can also share the content so on the same site i mean these videos of mine and everything will be and should be uh like shared also of course the user and i have used this in the past for uh, one of my client where i built uh, a site that they were using for help desk and based on the domain people were coming from like if someone is coming from delhi like delhi.somethingsomething.com the site will be different and the content will be different but delhi was also the headquarter it was like a super admin but if someone is coming from mumbai or bangalore uh bangalore by the way uh, the content will be different so this module domain module is uh, suitable for those cases where uh, uh the site needs to be shared along with the content and users with other domains and i thought i'll probably share this with all of you today and that is it that is it and that is all i wanted to talk about in this video i hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today thank you very much